Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Red Dead Redemption Online. If you enjoy this video, please ask random strangers if they like pelicans, and if they reply with anything other than, yes I love them, proceed to reverse roundhouse kick them in the jaw, and then teabag their unconscious bigotry bodies, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So my code in this game is that I won't kill you if you're friendly, just going about your business, or simply trying to defend yourself. In fact, I'll even help you if you need it. But if you try to kill me, or any other players, then I'll do my utter best to f you up. I'm not like a hero or anything, I just thoroughly enjoy murdering other players, and as long as I am only murdering other murderers, then it's all sunshine and unicorns. Except I guess the unicorns in this metaphor use their horns to like, disembowel people. So I spawn in and immediately notice that my character is looking a bit too much like an authentic cowboy. Excuse me, but what happened to the ridiculously inappropriate hat that I purchased last video? I head over to my horse and put it back on. Bloody Rockstar trying to force me to have an immersive experience, SMH. Also I need to be looking my best, as today I plan on approaching every player I come across to see how friendly the Red Dead community really is. I spot a player on the map nearby and ride over to him as fast as I can. I have a bit of trouble finding him, but then I hop back over the fence and the player known as Martin Chiller Kill guns me down with a damn cattleman's revolver of all weapons. Now what's our motto? We get murdered, we seek revenge. Second chances, no way. Hotel, Travago. But then a wave of compassion comes over me and I decide to give this dodgy malacca a second chance. See, from his perspective, a meth addict in an extravagant hat just came right at him during the middle of the night, and even though my intentions were pure, I don't really give off that friendly vibe. So I unmute my microphone and when I approach him, I'm like, mate, chill out, have a glass of water, I'm friendly, don't shoot. And this time he doesn't shoot me and so yeah, I help the guy out with his mission. I even even have the perfect moment for revenge while he is preoccupied, and maybe a younger pelican would have put a bullet in this man's head, but I decide to instead just let it all go. I feel like a Tibetan monk taking the high road, like Jesus forgiving Martin Chiller Kill for his truly awful sins. I decide to ride out of Saint Denis. Just kidding, I know it's pronounced Saint Denis, and see who else is out there, but this time when I approach people, I'll talk on my microphone right away and be all nice so they know that I am chill or dare I say, pelican chiller kill. As I approach the border of the city, there is a young lady by the name of Preskiller28. What's with all these similar ass names? Anyway, I get on the mic and I'm like, what's up girl, this hat was really expensive, I'm kind of a big deal. And then she blows a kiss at me and walks away into the ambient city lights. Like, wait a minute, did we just have virtual intercourse? Are we e-dating now? You better not have given my character chlamydia or I swear to God, I'll throw you in front of a train. Anyway, that's the last I saw of Prekiller28, who was I guess my first ever proper virtual girlfriend and who was also almost certainly a teenage boy. I leave Saint Denis and how good does it look galloping through this bridge at night, hot damn. I swear like every 10 minutes of playing this game I get a semi because of the graphics. I come across another player kneeling in the grass and again shout on the microphone lots of friendly stuff. That actually sounds really creepy, but basically these are just one-sided conversations because these people don't have microphones themselves. Here, I'll show you. Yo, Earthline. <clears throat> Earthline, what's good? Just looking all wholesome, squatting there like that. How are ya? It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello. <laughs> All right, have yourself a great day. Wow, that actually is a bit creepy, but even creepers deserve some love, you know? A short while later, I arrive in the town of Rhodes. I also get a notification saying that I apparently have mail to collect. I have no idea who would be sending me mail. I mean, it could be Santa Claus finally responding to the letters I wrote him confirming he has secured me one date with Emily Ratajowski and also a packet of Rohypnol. Those two things, of course, being completely unrelated. But it turns out Rockstar have sent me various types of arrows, but most importantly, fire arrows. Can I get a hecking heck yeah in the chat? I better test these fire arrows work properly on the local residents. A man with a wagon rolls past and so I light him up confirming that yes, 
Fire arrows do in fact light people on fire. Myth busted. Like any good scientist, it's always best to do a few supplementary trials to test for false positives, and so I confirm two more times that yes indeed. Shooting a flaming arrow with a small pouch of gunpowder attached to it will in fact most definitely burn your target alive. A train then rolls through the local station, and it has a gang of hoodlums on it, so I decide to gracefully jump aboard and see how these fine gentlemen are going. They all pull out guns, which is never a promising early sign a friendship is about to blossom, but I tell them, look, I only kill other killers, we are all good here, lads. The next thing I know, we are waving at each other, and I feel more relaxed about my chances of survival. Well, except for this guy named Starkiller1313, who I am genuinely pretty concerned about. So now I have made at least temporary peace with this trio, we just kind of chill on the train for a while. Video games are so weird, a train trip isn't at all exciting in real life, but for some reason it's really fun on a game, I don't get it. The peaceful commute was short lived though, as Starkiller1313 straight up starts murdering another player who jumped on the train with us. This man is ruthless and unstable. I start to wonder how long it will be until he turns that rifle on me. I decide the best way to stay alive is to try and fit in, so I pick up the body of the poor lad Starkiller just murdered and heartlessly dump him off the back of the train. Hopefully they think I'm super cool now. The guy whose body I dumped keeps respawning and then trying to catch back up with the train, but Starkiller and his boys just keep gunning him down. It's three against one, and I must say I start to feel quite bad for this poor soul, he has no one to help him. And I mean, I still do have several fire arrows left, and these guys are murdering him over and over again. So yeah, call your boy a bully hunter, because I decide to be the bigger man here, and proceed to shoot them all in the back. There's nothing quite as noble as earning someone's trust and then backstabbing them when they let their guard down. Judas Pelican Gaming coming at ya. But no, I'm only joking around, I mean I actually do find out where the real toxicity problem is in this game in just a moment, but Starkiller and his boys aren't actually toxic, it's all part of the experience, and that's why I came up with my code. I don't mess with people who are chill, but if I see that someone is up for a bit of casual violence then count me in. Anyway, Starkiller and his boys are probably going to try and seek revenge, so I again do the noble, brave thing, and ride away on my horse as fast as I can until they get bored of chasing me. After I'm done escaping, I come across this absolute legend by the name of Invalid Chain 900. This is the first player who actually had a microphone, but for some reason it didn't record his voice, which sucks, but basically this guy was one of the nicest people I've ever met while online gaming. We just cruised along, chatting for like 10 minutes, it was some single player sh**. He's looking forward to when Rockstar adds the ability to turn animal skins into clothing so that he can hunt and craft clothes that he can then give away to random players. What an absolute legend. Some random NPC bot is then like, hey there cowboy, can you save my friend's life? So I'm like, yeah sure, I guess mate. So I go and risk my life and use a lot of ammunition to save this guy's stupid friend, and then I have to ride him all the way back to his estate mansion. Well at least he seems to be rich, and I should get a handsome reward. Award, but then nope, $4.24. That's barely enough money to buy a train ticket back to the city. Like I just saved your life, you fair-skinned Grinch. In fact, this is quite toxic behavior. In fact, NPC bots are toxic, not actual real players. I decide to torch two of his guards to send him a message that when someone saves your life, rewarding them with the equivalent of a Happy Meal is not a fair trade. This man is out here making the O'Driscolls look generous. I decide to ride to the town of Valentine to further test my new theory that the players of Red Dead aren't toxic, but in fact the NPCs are the toxic, edgy little griefers. I ride until nightfall, which sounds pretty epic, but in reality it was only about 10 minutes, as one day in Red Dead time is 48 minutes in real time. Which means 30 minutes in Red Dead time is 1 minute in real time. And so if I last 5 minutes in the bedroom in real time, I last 2.5 hours in Red Dead time, which is pretty damn impressive. Sure Sure enough, the first real player I meet is friendly, and their horse even has cornrows. This animal is probably called Lil Horsey, and is about to start mumble rapping about owning a pair of Gucci horseshoes, vaping, and having a 14 inch penis, which is probably true for once. So yeah, then I'm just in the pause menu minding my own business, and this NPC in a wagon runs into me. Does he apologize? No, he pulls out a gun and tells me to watch my back. Well mate, that's toxic, and I simply won't stand 
stand for it, so like many before him, I burn him alive. Then the other NPCs in the town all start trying to snitch on me, so I am forced to reluctantly try and murder them all to stop them telling the sheriff. I can't believe I used to actually stick up for NPCs. I used to actually think Rockstar was just exploiting child labor and that every NPC in the game was a Venezuelan child being forced to walk around the map acting all normal. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but one thing is for certain. NPCs and slash or Venezuelan children are toxic and should be banned from online gaming forever. Fallout 76 was the first game to realize this. I do my best to kill all the witnesses, but eventually I am ratted out and have to flee into the bush, which again provides an incredibly cinematic shot, and again I get a graphically inspired erection. I wait for the heat to die down, and then on my way back into town, wolves start chasing me, and while I am trying to arm myself, I run into a tree, and then it all makes so much sense. And not only are NPCs toxic, it's actually the mother trees that are the real toxic griefers here. I mean, that wannabe ant knocked me off for like no reason. Okay, wow, this video is getting off the rails. I need to stop now. In summary, the Red Dead Redemption community is honestly amazing. It's so insane. In Grand Theft Auto, just driving past another player will often result in someone called something like XX Big D in your mum 420 XX destroying you with a futuristic alien weapon. But in Red Dead, it's so much easier to make friends or to just just simply coexist in a world with other players. There are a few trigger happy people out there, but it would be boring if everyone was friendly and they are now marked in red so you know when to keep your guard up. From now on though, it's going to be my personal objective to murder every NPC I can find and ensure us real players keep the infestation of bots down as much as possible. Look at this guy playing his little toxic trumpet, aka the devil's music. You know what we do with the likes of you, mate. You guessed it, we burn the that allegedly Venezuelan child alive. Thanks for watching you bloody legends and a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are amazing. 200,000 subscribers. I can't thank you all enough for that. I'll do a special video on Sunday to properly say thank you. Otherwise, until next time and as always, stay classy.